Another new year, another few new mobile operating systems. You saw my mention of Sailfish already. This is Ubuntu for phones, initially available for testing on the Galaxy Nexus hardware. This heavy use of gestures similar to Mego and the upcoming BlackBerry 10, a swipe to the left reveals your favourite apps and a swipe to the right takes you back to the last app. Plus, from anywhere, a long swipe from left to right, hope you're keeping up, will display all your open apps and a swipe from the bottom reveals application controls, meaning that more display real estate can be used for the actual app. App. One interesting oddity is that when docked, the phone becomes a full PC, <laughs> presumably with Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, and with display pass-through via HDMI. Over in the good old US of A, CES 2013 is in full swing, with the main device launches of interest so far being the Sony Xperia Z and the Huawei Ascendmate. The Xperia Z is something of an unattractive square-cornered slab with glass back and front, but the specs are very high, with a 5-inch 1080p display, 1.5-gig quad-core processor, 2GB of RAM, 16GB internal memory with a microSD card slot, a 13-megapixel camera, though only LED flash, 1080p HDR high dynamic range video, however the heck that works, plus it's also dust and water resistant, 8mm thin, powered by a 2330mAh battery and an Android 4.1 jelly bean from day one. I do wish there were more curves though. A second version of the phone, the Sony Xperia ZL, will be offered in some countries. It's slightly shorter, slightly thicker, slightly cheaper and isn't waterproof. Oh dear, oh dear, this size race is getting very silly. Huawei has a monster 6.1-inch screened Pentaban phone running Android 4.1. The Ascend Mate display is only 720p, but does make up in other areas with a 1.5 GHz quad-core processor and a 4,000 mAh battery. Plus, quote, magic touch, similar to Nokia's tech, which enables use with gloves on. Not sure whether we'll see this in Europe, though. Another one for the pot, this time a mere ha, 5 inch screen on the ZTE Grand S with 1080p resolution, LTE, quad core 1.7 gigahertz processor, 13 megapixel camera, 2 gig of RAM, a standard spec for 2013. Wow, though a 1780 milliampere battery won't last long with that monster processor and screen. Oops. I am in love. I'm a real metal fetishist in terms of phones and look just look at the back of this the samsung ativest acres of brushed stainless steel except it's not it's plastic fully flexible fully rf transparent plastic essential for the nfc battery to work yet it looks a million dollars huge kudos to samsung for this faux metal achievement and i'd like to see it on all their other smartphones thank you very much and pretty please including the Galaxy S3 or 4, which is coming up since the ATVS is effectively just the SGS3 with Windows Phone 8 implemented instead of Android. There are minor case curvature differences. The processor inside is dual core, not quad. The speaker's in a different place and the control keys now are for Windows Phone, but otherwise it's very, very similar to the best-selling Galaxy S3, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> Why fix what's not broken? Actually, parts of the mighty SGS3 spec are now looking slightly old, even after only eight months of release. That uh, Pentile 720p screen has now been bettered by 768p RGB displays, as on the Lumia 920 I reviewed recently, and of course 1080p displays on Android. Uh, the Lumia has a much better speaker and arguably a better camera, but I'm quibbling really. The ATVS is still a top-flight smartphone. Windows Phone 8 is, of course, an acquired taste, at least for phone fans who will have to put in some effort to get to grips with the controlling environment. Something of a shock after Symbian, Mego, Android, and even, well, BlackBerry. Aside from the home screen tile layouts, there's not that much you can do to customise or optimise Windows Phone 8. It's all very well Apple-like, I think. However, with the Portico update on this ATVS and rolling out now for other Windows Phone devices around the world, uh, Windows Phone 8 is now quite usable. Wi-Fi now stays connected if you want it to, yes. Though the default, bizarrely, is for it to disconnect all the time a few seconds after the screen goes off. I guess Microsoft wanted to save a bit more battery life, though uh, the 2300 milliamp hour replaceable battery here is more than up to the job, so I really don't see why they're being so paranoid. One problem with Windows Phone here on the ATVS is that we've got used to every smartphone now coming with a suite of navigation software. Every Android phone has it, every recent Symbian phone has it, the iPhone has it, and Nokia's Windows phones have it, but here there's no Nokia Drive or similar. As with HTC's Windows Phone 8 devices, you're left completely on your own in this area. I tried the third-party Navigation UK application for £4 with very mixed results. 
crashes and glitches galore, and a world away from Nokia Drive or Google navigation. The rest of the Windows phone suite is here though, from the full Pocket Office implementation and full social and email support, uh, Samsung do provide chat on an IM system that no one's ever heard of, Family Story, a Windows Phone 8 Rooms alternative with the same downside that all your other family members really need to have Windows Phone 8 devices too. And that's not going to happen. Uh, live wallpaper, not quite as exciting as it sounds. Mini Diary, a rather pleasant skeuomorphic virtual diary into which you can put photos, uh, voice, text, drawings and more, all coded by day. And I was glad to see this can be both backed up to SkyDrive and also restored back from SkyDrive if you ever have to replace or wipe your phone. Good stuff. Finally, Samsung Now is a combined weather and news utility. The live tile here just shows temperature, which is a complete waste. Um, but tap through shows a detailed weather forecast, the customizable news stories from Yahoo News, customizable stocks and shares from Yahoo Finance, a currency lookup converter plus top tweets from around the world. With a live tile upgrade, Samsung Now could be a very decent portal to online information. As I found on the Lumi 920, Windows Phone 8's media handling is now excellent, both side loading from a Windows 7 or 8 PC or here, by simply popping everything onto a micro SD card. The speaker's not bad either. Not up to, uh, not up to iPhone or Nokia. 808 standards, but still pretty good. The camera is good too. The identical unit to that in the Galaxy S3 and only really falls down in low light indoors. Insert my usual Xenon and the Flash rant. Test video footage on the Samsung TVS. Continuous autofocus, pretty good sound. Not much to complain about here. Set in the context of the Nokia Lumias and the two HTC Windows Phone 8 devices, the Samsung TVS has both pros and cons. On the one hand, there's the huge and replaceable battery and micro SD expansion, both massive plus points for me, and I suspect I'm not alone. On the other hand, the display is not quite as crisp, and anyone who travels will also need to invest in a third party navigation solution. It's a tough call. If I were going all in on Windows Phone 8, though, there is one clinching factor waking up that lovely faux steel every single morning. Oh, yes. <laughs>